Hey guys, what's going on? I'm in um, Utah. Undisclosed location on the side of a mountain in the middle of nowhere. I'm here with Phil. Uh, I will tell you, Phil is a former Mar Marsoc Raider, which means uh, once a Marine, always a Marine, right? You're still a Marsoc Raider, right? Yeah, just better air. Yeah, just he's, he's active, <laughs> I think, or something like that. But um, he's also Phil Craft Survival's new mobility um, instructor. I was going to throw an overland there, but we'll just call it mobility for the simplicity of, of verbiage. Mobility. The difference with mobility and overlanding is when we talk about mobility, it ties into the military stuff we did because you have to take in consideration preparing, planning, um, the things that are going to save your life. No offense to overlanders, but most people who overland that are traveling from point A to point B, they do so um, to reach a destination but we might just do it to just adventure. And so we're thinking about survival, we're thinking about med. And to me, that's the, the difference between mobility and overlanding, and I wanna differentiate that. And so when we look at instructors or people who are running mobility, Phil's the perfect hybrid because he has experience doing it in the worst case scenario, which is war, uh, overlanding overseas, doing mobility operations, but also in the transition, doing it as a civilian and teaching uh, people on the fly. That was a long intro. Whatever, I could do what I want, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, so what I want to do in this video is give you guys an intro to a couple of the rigs that Phil has and give you a little background on who he is so you can get to know him. So I got this vehicle from uh, Travis, who used to be with the company, um, really because I was looking to upgrade because I moved from North Carolina out here to Utah. North Carolina, my um, Forerunner is far more adapted to the terrain. Um, it was narrow, it was a lot more rocky, clay, those kinds of things. Out here in Utah, I spent a lot of time down in Moab in a desert environment. So the long travel suspension, um, the bigger truck for the family, it's supercharged for the size of the vehicle. Um, it's all conducive to my mission now here, exploring the Midwest. So still perfectly capable of rock crawling and everything else, but it can also go fast if I needed to off-road, so. So you got some stuff going on here, and you got rigid lights, you have an antenna, you have a, a loop on your front bumper, which is still, um, I like that, and you have a self-recovery factory 55 winch setup. What are some of the thought processes in this? Because this looks pre-runner to me, yeah. but it also looks super capable. So weight's a big thing. Um, so for range purposes, right? If depending how far I need to go, um, the fuel consumption of this bigger vehicle, I wanted to go more slim line. So What's your MPG on this? Um, I think it sits right around 16-ish. But yeah. supercharger and everything else, it really depends how you drove it. You drive it, right? Or even tire pressure off road. That so if you actually hit the gas, then it's like five miles per gallon. Probably. <laughs> if it's idling, it's six. But feet. it's still doing better than the Forerunner was fully loaded down. Yeah. So um, for upgraded size to carry more gear, the family, everything else, um, and the big heavy uh, suspension upgrades, it does really well. And, and I think that's why the lower profile is better suited for out here too. I don't need a ton of side protection because I'm not doing rock crawling anymore and I'm not worried about stuff getting crushed in or headlights getting hit. But this is enough that this cattle out here out west, right? So if I was to hit a cow or deer or whatever, it's going to protect the vehicle. I still can get to my destination. Um, like we kind of talked about earlier, your loadout, right? So depending where you're going, out here is far more austere. I don't know if I'm going to get cell phone service, those things. So I have a cell phone amplifier and then I got a radio system in a truck in case, worst case scenario, I need help, so. Um, I, I noticed, so, you know, one of the important factors, like he, like he just mentioned, that we harp on. I mean, this is coming from OG experience from Scott Brady from Overland Journal, Mario Donovan from Adventure Trailers, who are mentors of mine in the overlanding space. But I've overlanded all over the, the world. Uh, I mean, Libya, Pakistan, Iraq, Afghanistan, Yemen, all over. And one thing that people don't understand that you mentioned is like the Forerunner bogged down has a low capacity of about 1,500 pounds. That's including passengers. So you put steel bumpers front and back, 
you put skid plates, you put a spare tire, anything on the back of your rig, you've already capped out. And I've had the compromise of these kind of circumstances where I feel like I'm going to slide off the edge of a cliff in the snow um, because I'm overweight. Absolutely. And the cool thing about tundras and full size, one ton axle, whatever, is that you have low capacity. That's why I have the Ram. Uh, that's why he has the Tundra. And we kind of advocate for that because four runners and Land Cruisers and Toyota Tacomas in America aren't the same as they are in a turbo diesel one ton axle overseas. So when you see the South African driving on his Land Cruiser and, and he's mobbing out and he's loaded down, he has more low capacity than you do domestically because of all the restrictions that you face with emissions on top of um, all the different things that we're, we're dealing with uh, in the United States. That's why I like full-size pickup trucks. Absolutely. Because you could weigh it down, and my, my Dodge Ram has like a 3,500 pound uh, load capacity. This is probably similar. I think it's a couple thousand, maybe a few thousand pounds. And so you'd never get into that bracket of compromise, of suspension, of brake components, of engine, and everything else in between. So it, it's a really beautiful setup, and I, I actually love it. Um, let's skip everything in between and talk about the rear end because the rear end is where the magic happens. I don't know, I just went with that. So we're at the back end um, of this rig, and I, I see some things that are different. I've seen a lot of people run spare tires in the truck bed for balance and weight and all that stuff. You have it on a, a swing arm, you also have a rack system that's set up here with a looks like a shower tank. Talk talk me through some of the stuff and and the reason that you did what you did on the on this rig. Yeah, so it's definitely been a learning curve. So the one fun thing about this rig is it has shocks through the bed. So it's definitely a, a nice to have, not a need to have, but it also means I can go 70 miles an hour off road loaded down and it floats because it's kind of trophy truck-esque pre-runner build. Um, but my plan was to still keep it low profile um, and everything below the cab line for fuel efficiency and those kind of things. So I still wanted to have the fridge, still wanted to have tools, still wanted to have air, all these things that I can self-sustain off of, um, but still try to keep it slim line and white. So that's why I opted with the rack system here to put a rooftop tent on. Um, and then got the 37 inch tire out of the bed so I could put fridge tools and air. But honestly, it's always evolving. So one of our learning experiences was on a trip, uh, somebody came into our camp at 1 a.m. and um, started going through trucks and getting out of a traditional rooftop tent with a pistol in the middle of the night um, was super cumbersome and I felt very um, exposed. So. We're actually making a swap now to a Go Fast Camper, which is similar to yours, um, because that enables me to lock everything up, everything's sealed, it's a harder target. Um, we can put more stuff in, in the bed of the truck, still access it at night if we're in the rooftop tent, and um, if I need to defend my space per se, I can drop levels into the bed and have 360 situational awareness. So, it's definitely been a learning experience getting into a bigger vehicle. Where, where are you putting the minigun at? Is there, I'm assuming that you're gonna have a minigun system that swings out in a swing arm or something? Yeah, so I'm still learning the, the Utah firearm rules, but I think they're better <laughs> in North Carolina. But, um, um, yeah. What about the truck, the, the truck bed circumstance with the living situation? Because one, one of the difficult things with the truck bed and looking at it, how, how it's set up is um, you don't have a lot of space. Right. Most beds are five to six feet, uh, short beds are. And when you when you put tools in, when you put recovery in, you start running out of room quick. Yeah. What, what's the plan to kind of like capitalize on that? So I had to, um, I had to kind of innovate some things. So we went with a Molly system, just like we would in the military, right? So I can mount everything on the sides. I got a small ATV box and that's divided in two for tools to sustain the vehicle and then cooking, camping, survival gear on the other side. And then obviously I have the fridge for frozen food and everything else. I've lived out of that for two weeks before. So you're only doing ice cream out of that? That's weird. Pretty much, and killer shots, but. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
And then I had to get this giant jack because the 37 inch vehicle long travel suspension needs to go a long way if you're gonna change out a wheel or You're still doing camp Camberg still in this rig, right? Camping out of it. A Camberg, uh, the racing suspension? Yes, so it's Fox suspension with Camberg long travel kit. Wow. So yeah. I can still be fully loaded down with this thing going 70 through a desert on uneven terrain. And Supercharged. It just eats it up, yeah. Does Travis realize he got ripped off when you bought this truck from him and he, he sunk 50K into it? I don't know, he's on truck number three now, so. I know. Yeah, he just sold his last rig too. His last. Yeah, I mean, that was for reliability. The Raptor, right? Yeah, reliability. He's running into issues with that? That's why I'll always go Toyota, just because we know overseas those things yeah. can be shot up and they still work, but yeah. proud and true. I like it, man. Um, are you excited about the future with mobility and Phil Kraut's survival? Yeah, I mean, how could you not say? <laughs> well, you're my boss, so I'm gonna say yes for sure. But um, but no, I mean, that's dream job. Honestly, get to teach people that want to learn, and then I'm really teaching what I already do regularly, right? So I, I think share yeah. my experiences. Like when I think about uh, our instructors at Philcraft, I think, you know, it's it's a Tim Ferriss book. It's Tribe of Mentors, and, and I, I like Tim Ferriss, and I, I think that, that ideology, um, that way of thinking where if you're going to have a tribe, have a tribe of people who are more experienced and smarter than you. Um, I mean, all the guys that I'm surrounded with, Kevin Owens was my senior. He was my boss in special operations. He had 20 years more experience than I had at the start point of my career. But when I look for uh, instructors, we look for mentors. It's not just a guy who can come out and, and show you some stuff that he learned online or that he did uh, in a class, but more so guys who have experience tied to technical training skill sets and that can guide you through this process without being a dick bag, right? Because we know that the tactical space and even the mobility space or overland space has a lot of arrogant people. It's like, get over yourself. You overland, bro. You get overland in a caravan, in, in, like a caravan, Dodge caravan, minivan. Sorry, I get excited. I just want, I want people to understand that the guys that we hire have the right personality, which is they don't have egos. The, no egos is the way that you learn because you're open and willing to learn different ways or different things and looking at stuff. I learn more from my students than anything else. Absolutely. Um, but that's why we hired you and that's why I'm excited about the future for mobility and overland training because um, this is what it's all about. You love the passion you have and eventually we'll suck that passion out of you and just be a job. And you're, <laughs> you're like, I hate overlanding. Just joking. That ain't gonna happen. Hope not. <laughs> um, talk to us about some um, some things to look forward to in the future with you personally, tracking your experiences, some overland trips that you have planned. So, still on the list right now to explore the Pacific Northwest this fall. Mm. I've never been there. Beautiful. It's a different environment, it's a different trail system, all those things. So, and everything out west is as close or as far as you want, but um, vehicle sustained travel is something that I enjoy. I mean, it's a little bit of a luxury compared to what we were doing downrange, right? Even if you're in a map V, it's not that great. But for this, you, get, you have everything on board that you need, and we can go for two weeks at a time. And it supports all the activities that I enjoy, mountain biking, hunting, all these things. So it's really a home on wheels. So be a lot of that coming this fall because that's the lifestyle I live and then sharing all those experiences too. Awesome. I like that, man. <laughs> um, and you're going to bring your girl and your dog yep. as well. So I've also compiled a list of pre-mission checks which go with that, right? Mm -hmm. Happy wife, happy life. So I had to learn, always bring an extra sleeping bag, all these things. So. Yeah. Yeah, that, that changes the game when you have a family tied into overlanding and tied into travel. Yeah. Is it, it just, like I love people who get tourniquets and they have a car full of people and they got one tourniquet. Right. Um, and you're on level four now because you've got kids too, right? And that's a whole other set of movies. Completely different game, right? Um, man, I appreciate you doing this video. This is one of a gabillion that you're going to have to do. <laughs> You'll get better at it. and. Um, um, I'm, I'm looking forward to it because I want to see you share your experiences and get people pumped like I know you are about overlanding travel 
uh, and about mobility. So I'm looking forward to it. Guys, you can check him out in the notes below. Uh, we got some changing to do, just click the link. Um, but also uh, check out fieldcraftsurvival.com. We will hyperlink uh, network overlandtraining.com, which we uh, have as well, that will be tied directly to mobility and all the training courses that we have. Uh, next month we have Bug Out Basics, it's a one day course, uh, as well as um, some additional mobility courses and trail runs that we're gonna be doing with Phil and the Mobility Gang. So I appreciate it guys. Uh, until next time, stay alert, stay alive, and make sure you hit subscribe. That rhymes, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs>